welcome to episode okay, so two. Here's our blanket. Mm-hmm. Excellent. Asymmetrical to the Dropping and sinking up. Notice how the so just notice joining us for the second episode of next week. So. Namaste. Namaste. Welcome to episode 53 of Namaste Yoga. Happily, this is our second year, so congratulations to Dr. Melissa West. She's given out free yoga, she's sharing the love, so we're hoping that you are enjoying these classes. So my name is Paul Gangadeen. I'm a friend of Melissa West, and we're here today to do the second of three parts of Babaji's Kriya Yoga. I believe it was episode 49, we looked at uh, the first through six postures, and today we're going to look at seven through 12. My company is called Pure Life Ayu Yoga, or PLAY as an acronym. You can find me online at playuyoga.com. That's P-L-A-Y letter U, yoga.com. So today, as I said, we're going to work through postures 7 through 12. And these postures are meant to be performed in pairs. So if you refer back to the earlier episode, you'll see we did the salutation posture and then we did the sun salutation series. That's one. And then there was a shoulder stand and then the fish, that's two. And then finally a standing forward bend and then the bow, that's three, three pairs. We'll do the next three pairs right now. And the first posture is a Vibharit Tikarani or half shoulder stand. So let's roll around, we'll lie on our back. I forgot to mention we are at the shores of Lake Ontario. Glorious day, Indian summer. So lie comfortably onto your back. Pull your heels together. Keep your arms alongside your body and just walk your shoulders down the mat one at a time. Walk your hips down one at a time just to create some space. If you're feeling that moving into an inversion is going to be a little difficult for you today, I just ask that you lift your knees, lift your hips and just bring yourself up into a bridge. I'll demonstrate the full aspect of the posture and we'll leave it to Melissa to show you the modification. Okay, so from the bridge, lift your toes towards the sky and just spread and squeeze your toes. This is about bringing energy into your feet. Babaji's Kriya Yoga is all about opening through the joints and glands, allowing the energy in your body to flow freely. Bend your knees, kick your heels to the seat, inhale up, exhale kick. Do this a couple times just to warm up through your knees, send the breath out through your nose, and then we'll stop the motion. Very slowly, just extend your toes towards the sky. And now this is a half shoulder stand, so there's no tension in the neck here. You're just going to bend the knees towards your chest, palm into the floor, and just take your hands to your waistband or the outer hips, and you're just going to extend your feet towards the sky. Notice my neck is rolling freely. My shoulders are into the mat. You want to make sure there's a little bit of space behind your neck. Or, just refer to Dr. West here. Notice what she's doing. You're still going to get a lot of benefit from the posture. So if you're in the full expression, or not, I want you to focus right at your heart center. You draw the breath in, exhale through your nose. If you wish, you could visualize the color of green at your heart. You could access the mantra that I introduced in the first sequence. Om Kriya Babaji Nama Om. Om Kriya Babaji Nama Om. Just meditate on that mantra as you focus at your heart and you breathe deeply. If the toes are lifting up, you want to make sure the big toenail is resting right above your heart. 
It is said that this posture has a great restorative effect. According to the yoga tradition, it brings youthfulness. Notice if you're holding any tension in the forehead, the temples, or the jaws, swallow down. If your toes are lifted to the sky, just wiggle your toes. Bend at your knees, bring your heels towards the seat. Bring your knees towards your face. Extend your legs and then gently release your arm one at a time. Softly release one vertebra at a time. If you're in the bridge, lower yourself down nice and easy. We'll extend the legs towards the sky. And then inhale right into your navel. Exhale, lower both of your legs with control all the way to the ground. You can also bend your knees to protect the low back, bring the soles to the floor. And then once you come to the ground, just separate your legs, separate your arms. Inhale, just gently lift your head to the chest. Exhale, lower your head. And then softly let it fall from side to side temple to temple and then stop the motion and just remain in your Shavasana for as long as you hold the posture now for the sake of taping we're going through these postures quickly but you have the option to hold as long as you wish or you can do all 18 postures in less than an hour if you wish different energies that you're working with. So just play around and experiment, but be very mindful of your body and how you move. At no point should you physically rush through the postures just to get through them, okay? Let the energy do what it needs to do. It's a very deep practice. <laughs> Bless you. So let's wiggle through the fingers and toes. Extend your legs, point your toes, lift your arms overhead, connect your palms, and stretch your body in two opposite directions. You can either roll to your side, help yourself up, or inhale, lengthen. Exhale, lift your arms and body all the way up, and just pulse over your feet. Send the breath out through your nose. And then we'll stop the motion. You can take hold of your shins your ankles, the side of the feet, or the big toes. Every time you inhale, you want to pull your heart forward, pull the shoulders back. Exhale, fold a little deeper at your hips. And then when you've come to your edge, just relax your head and neck, round into your spine. And then we'll release the legs, we come upright. Now, typically, after each posture, we stand up and the heels together, the feet apart. But as we're performing in pairs, we'll do a pair and then we'll close off standing with the reset posture, okay? We'll demonstrate that afterwards. So the counter pose, join your heels together. Let your feet fall out to the side. Bring your forearms to the mat. Press your elbows to the ground. Roll your shoulders back. Tuck your chin. Lift your heart. Let your navel fall in. This is accessible for most people. If you need to, you can also take Baddha Konasana with the legs, join the soles of the feet, let your knees fall out to the sides. Preferably though, keep your heels touching, your feet fanning out. Touch your chin to the chest, look forward. If and only if you've got the flexibility in your neck, as you press into the ground, reach the center of your neck towards this. There'll be a tendency to crunch right behind the neck. In order to avoid injury to your neck, just pull into your chin slightly, lift through your neck, and just let your crown hang back. If anyone wants to move a little deeper, you have the option. You can walk your elbows towards the hip, hold on to your legs, let your crown Keep lifting through your heart. And if this is the final posture for you, see what it feels like if you bring your hands into Anjali Mudra at your heart. I like to joke that this is a natural facelift when the head hangs back. 
you just take all the tension out of your face. Close your eyes and focus right at the Anya Chakra, the point right between the eyebrows. The mind starts to wander, just come back to the mantra. Om Kriya Babaji Nama Om. If you want to play with sounds, the sound of the mantra is like this. Om Kriya Babaji Nama Om. If you're in the full expression of the posture, when it's time to come out, you bring your arms down first, hold on to your legs. You press your elbows to the mat, create a little bit of tension into the ground so you can gently lift your head up. Touch the chin to the chest softly and then lower your spine all the way down. We take another Shavasana, so separate through your heels, the feet flop open. Separate your elbows away from the body, turn your palms up. Allow the energy in your neck to free, so turn your neck softly from side to side a few times. And then stop the motion. Again, take the same amount of time to rest in your Shavasana as you took to hold the posture. As I mentioned in the earlier installment, Kriya Yoga is action with awareness. It's a cleansing or purification technique. So you can view holding the posture as the active aspect, and then this is the passive aspect. Regardless of whether you're holding the posture or taking Shavasana, there should be no tension in the body. We use this particular practice to breathe into the body. We notice where we're holding tension. And then as we exhale, we try to send that tension out with the breath. So let's wake the body up, wiggle through the fingers, wiggle through the toes. Draw your legs together, extend your arms overhead, give yourself a nice deep stretch, stretch away from your waist. Touch your chin to the chest so you can open behind your neck a little bit more. And again, I'll give you the option. If the low back is feeling sore, if your neck is sore, just roll to your side. Help yourself up and over. Otherwise, as you're on your back, inhale, lengthen your body. Exhale, lift your arms as if you're being pulled up by the divine and you're coming forward and pulse. Send the breath out through your nose. Again, it's a very gentle massage to the internal organs. Keep reaching out through your heels, you ground into the sit bones. And then we stop the motion, just take hold of the legs, anywhere on the legs. When you inhale, look up, lengthen your spine, heart comes forward, shoulders roll back. Relax through your knees, and then softly go into a passive mode. Just let your chin touch towards the chest, round into your spine. Take all the tension out of your face. Release your legs, bring yourself upright. So, the getting up and coming down onto the mat is also part of the practice. If you're experiencing some trouble in the knees or in the hips, Take your time. All you need to do is just roll to the side and bring yourself up to standing. Otherwise, if you wish, you can bend your knees, you cross your legs, press into the floor, come all the way up to standing. So this is what I was demonstrating. The heels come together, your feet come out to the sides, palms together. You rest your thumbs right at the heart, relax your shoulders. And even though your heels are grounding to the floor, you want to tuck the tail slightly. Lift up through your arches and just close your eyes. Notice how you're breathing. 
Notice where you're holding tension in your body. Just let it go. Inhale into the awareness of tension. Exhale, release, surrender. If you're tensing through the jaws or through the glutes, just let that go as well. This is all about feeling your body in this particular space and time. Go deeper into the mantra. Oh, Kriya Balaji Nama Om. Softly open your eyes. Release your hands. So you can come down the same way you came up. Cross your left leg in front of the right. Bring yourself down to sitting. Or just come down naturally according to your level of ability. So next, Halasana or Kalapoyasana, the plow posture. Before I demonstrate this, I just want to let you know, this is a very deep posture. It has a great healing effect, but if performed improperly, it could actually create some injury. So I'd like you to notice how you're feeling in your neck, in your spine particularly, and in your shoulders. If you're experiencing any tightness whatsoever, I'd like you to refer to Melissa. What we're going to do is she's going to show you a modification. I'm going to show you the full expression. If you're going into the fullest expression of the posture, the biggest cue I could offer to you and to the students that I've taught is to keep your neck stationary. Also make sure the back of your neck is not touching the ground. You want to make sure that you're honoring the arch in the cervical spine. Okay? So let's do this. Legs come forward. Clear the sit bones. You want to make sure the sit bones are connected to the ground. The base of your spine is connected to the ground. It's like a three-prong plug. You're plugging into the earth. Inhale, lift your arms. Look up, reach up. Exhale, cross your arms. Tuck your chin round your spine. And then as slow as you wish, come all the way down. So before I demonstrate the full posture, I'm just going to give the cues to Melissa. So you press your palms to the ground, lift your knees up, plant the soles of your feet, hips width apart. Look beyond the tip of your nose and just at the bottom of your vision, see that your knees are in line with your hips. You can pulse or do a Kriya with your breath, just as we did in the first session. As you inhale, just lift the mid spine all the way up towards the shoulders. Then as you exhale, release one vertebra at a time. Pulse all the way down. When you inhale again, connect with the ground, scoop your tail, lift up, pull up, press into your heels as the hips come high, take the tension out of your glutes. And then you exhale, you lower down, nice and easy. When it's time for you to hold the posture, all you're gonna do is come all the way up, you can keep your arms alongside the body or you can interlace your fingers underneath, walk your shoulder blades, press into your heels, elevate your hips, lift your belly towards the sky, let the navel fall in, keep pressing your heart towards the sky and just notice what's happening behind your neck. If you can feel the back of your neck into the floor, turn your chin more towards your forehead. Close your eyes. Meditate at your throat. No tension in the face. If you're going into the full expression, here's what we're going to do. Just as we did for the half shoulder or the shoulder, legs come up, we'll do the pulsation. Yes, there's a frog croaking. He's doing Kriya Yoga with us. Pull your knees to the chest, lift your hips up. Extend your legs towards the sky. Fold gently back. Keep your legs straight at first. Bring your feet to the floor. Release your hands. Clasp your hands if you wish. Again, do not look around. Lift through your hips. If the knees want to go soft, that's okay. 
You can either have your toenails into the floor or you can curl through the toes. If you want to play with the Kriya very gently, just pulse into your heels, forward and back. The meditation is right at your throat. Visualize, please, the color of blue. And just focus on the mantra, Om Kriya Babaji Nama Om. Or just breathe in the sound of Om, breathe out the sound of Om, mentally or vocally. Again, check in with the tension in your face. Let it go. If you're in the plow, coming out, you bend at the knees, palms down, Gently release one vertebra at a time. Extend your hips into the ground, keep your legs lifted. If you're in the bridge, lower your bridge. Lift your feet to the sky. Deep breath into the navel. And again, if the low back is sore, you can bend the knees. Otherwise, as you exhale, lower your legs with control. If you run out of the exhalation, hold your legs. You breathe, exhale. Exhale, you lower down. And then once you've come down, we take a Shavasana again, open through your heels, let your feet open, lift your arms, spread them away from your body, turn your palms up. Gently inhale, lift your head up, chin to chest, releasing through the neck. Exhale, lower your head back. And again, just let it fall from side to side, temple to temple. And just rest well and breathe well. Turning the head from side to side allows you to process any of the energy that's either moving from the bottom up or from the top down. It's opening that channel. This is a kundalini practice and we're systematically working with each of these psycho-spiritual energy centers known as the chakras. So when I tell you to focus at a particular point, we're actually targeting that chakra. We're breathing into it, we're breathing out of it in an effort to open up. And because this is a very deep practice and it's a spiritual practice, we access into a lot of release. Physical release, mental release, emotional release. This is the cleansing. This is why we perform these Kriyas. We want to open ourselves up remove all of these blockages that are preventing us from knowing our deeper selves. Let's wiggle through the fingers and toes. Pull the legs together, point your toes, extend your arms overhead, connect your palms. Inhale, stretch, and then exhale, come up and over according to your level and pulse. I come all the way up and over because I've practiced for a number of years, but when I first started doing it, I'd roll to the side, press myself up, and then pulse. That's totally fine. Melissa is just pointing out a really key point. Thank you. If the low back is sore, you can bend the knees again. And this is pretty much standard for any yoga posture, whether it's standing, on the floor, back bend, forward bend. Bend your knees, play with your balance, play with your hips. Now, if you have more time, you would just cross your legs, press yourself up to sitting, and take the palms together with the heart. But as we're performing in Paris, I'll just say, let's roll over onto the belly. We'll do the counter pose now. So pull your feet together, your arms are alongside the body. You can either rest your chin, your mouth, or your forehead to the mat, depending on how comfortable you are in the neck, okay? Figure that out for yourself. When you take an inhalation, lift your right leg off the ground. When you exhale, keep the leg lifted, but lower your right hip. Inhale, lift the right leg a little higher. Exhale, reach the right toes back. 
Your next exhalation, just ride the breath, lower your leg all the way down. Notice any change in length between the left and right side. When you inhale, lift your left leg all the way up towards the sky. When you exhale, keep the leg lifted, but lower through your hip. Inhale again, lift the leg a little higher. Exhale, reach the leg back, lengthen. Your next exhalation, ride the breath, slowly lower down. Focusing on both of your arms, when you inhale, lift your arms off the ground. Exhale, pretend I'm coming around to your wrist. I pull your wrist back, shoulders lift away. And then lower your arms towards the floor. If the low back is sore, press your toenails to the ground, lift your knees off the floor. Otherwise, take an inhalation, lift your head, your throat, your chest, come up gently, and then lower down. Inhale, lift your body, and lower down. So just pulse up and down on your breath. And you can play with either lifting your arms off the ground, going a little deeper into the paraspinal muscles, or keep your fingernails on the ground as a support to lift and lower. That's up to you. So let's lower all the way down. We'll bend into the elbows, bring your palms next to your cheeks. Tuck your elbows into the mat. Walk your arms down the mat so your shoulders move away from your ears. Spread your fingers wide. Press your fingers into the mat. Lift the palms off the mat gently. And as you inhale, softly lift the head, the throat, the chest. Taking Sphinx Pose. If this is a little challenging for your neck and spine, Walk your elbows forward, right underneath the shoulders to support. Keep spreading through the fingers to open the energy of your hand. Now the next inhalation, I want you to look up. Navel comes into the spine, but pull your heart forward. Pull the shoulders back. If the low back is sore, I want you to engage through the tailbone. Press the tail towards the heels. Lengthen through your low back, pull the navel in, and look a little bit more forward. Gently let your head turn from side to side now. And then stop the motion. You can remain in this position if you wish. The meditation is right at your third eye center, so close your eyes. Inhale, notice what tension you're holding in your face. As you exhale, soften through the forehead, the temples, and the jaws, swallow down. If you want to go a little deeper, Shimmy your elbows back a little bit. Press into the floor, and then on one deep inhalation, as you press down, you straighten your arms, lift your body up. Only do this if you've got the support in your low back. So you can tuck into the tail a little bit, pull the heart forward, shoulders back. Let's gently come out of the posture, exhale, release one vertebra at a time, back to earth. So now we go right into the devotional aspect of this particular posture. Extend your arms forward, touch your palms together. Lower your forehead to the mat and consider surrender. Check in with what that means for you. Touch your big toes together, touch your ankles and heels together. If you wish, keep your arms extended. Just turn your palms up towards the skies if you want to receive from the divine. So here comes the active phase. When you inhale, lift your body up, send your arms out to the sides like airplane wings, and then exhale, dive forward and clap. Inhale, you lift. Exhale, dive and clap. Do this nine times. Three. Four, five, seven, and nine. Surrender, forehead down. I've been asked many times, why do we clap? 
The clapping is to awaken the energy right at the crown chakra. It's like a magnetism. Pulls your energy up, through, and beyond. Let's gently roll onto the back. We take Shavasana. So let's wake up into our awareness. Eyes are closed, wiggle your fingers and toes. Pull your heels together, point your toes forward, extend your arms overhead, connect your palms. Tuck your chin in, inhale and stretch. Exhale, lift up and over, pulse, Kriya breath. Right out through your nose. And stop the motion, explore the lengthening, the opening in your spine, pull the heart forward, the shoulders come back. Tuck your chin, go passive, relax the spine. Release your legs, come upright. Let's come up to standing. So again, if you want to strengthen through the knees and the thighs, just cross your legs, press into the floor and come up. Or build up to that in time. Let's close the sequence, heels together, feet apart, palms together. Stand straight. Soften through the shoulders, the hips, the glutes, all the muscles in the face. And just meditate at your heart. Meditate on the mantra. Softly open your eyes, release the arms. Come back down the same way you came up. So I'm gonna cross my legs, I bend, and I come down to sitting. Now, the next posture is a half wheel. This is going to take a little bit of time to develop if you're new to practice. If this is what's happening for you today, I'm gonna to refer to Dr. West. She's going to do a bridge posture. If you're going to practice again with either a half wheel or full wheel it's all about being accessible in your shoulders and making sure you're not crunching into your neck okay so let's go let's extend the legs forward clear your sit bones again establish your plug the connection reach out through your heels engage through your knees inhale send your arms out turn your palms up look up pull your heart up Exhale, cross your arms, tuck your chin, round your spine, let's lower all the way down. Palms to the side of the body. I'm going to direct Melissa up into the bridge, so please lift your knees, plant the soles of your feet. And again, you can do the exercises if you wish, lifting and lowering your spine, but for the sake of time, we're just gonna inhale. She's gonna lift her hips, Again, make sure that the back of the neck is not flat to the ground. You're not tucking your chin in. The chin's moving away from the chest. Roll the shoulder blades flat under. You can take hold of the hands underneath the seat. Keep lifting through the hips. Try not to puff the belly. Relax through the navel. Press into the heels. Keep your legs parallel. Avoid them from falling out to the sides or pulling into the midline. Stay balanced. If you're going to work with a half wheel, simply lift your arms to the sky, spread through your fingers first. Lift your shoulders off the mat, relax the shoulders down. You're gonna bend into the elbows, bring your fingers right underneath the shoulders. Pull your elbows a little closer in, 
ground into your palms, ground into the soles of your feet. Nice deep breath comes into your body. And then as you exhale, you press to the ground, you lift your hips, press into your palms, settle your crown down. I advise that you work with a teacher if this is new for you. Whatever option you take, whether you're in the bridge or in the half wheel, close your eyes, focus right at the crown. Just visualize healing white light resting right at your crown as you breathe in and breathe out. Go into the mantra. Take the tension out of your face with each exhalation. If you want to go into full wheel, notice how open the shoulders are. You want to pull the shoulders back into the body. Press into the ground and lift all the way up. But again, this is an advanced posture. Work up to it. The first stage is just to visualize you doing it, and then over time you'll be able to do it. When we practice Kriya Yoga, it's all about building our powers of visualization, seeing the potential within ourselves, breathing into it and being present with it. If you're in the full wheel, slowly lower yourself down, bring your crown to the floor, pause for a breath. To come out, you press into the ground, lift your head up, release your shoulders, release your hips. If you're in the bridge, slowly bring your hips back to the ground, bring your palms to the floor alongside your body. You have the option to either lift your legs towards the sky if you want to charge into your core, and again, you lower down on your exhalation or just simply extend your heels out. Relax. Open your arms, let your feet flop. Again, let the head roll from side to side. We hold a lot of tension in the neck. Stop the motion. Wiggle through your fingers and toes. Pull the legs together, point out of your toes, extend your arms overhead. Squeeze your palms together. Tuck your chin in, lengthen your body. Exhale, find your way to come up and over, pulse. And again, take hold of the legs. Heart comes forward, shoulders roll back. When it feels right for you, go passive into your spine, chin to chest, just hang out. Then release the legs, bring yourself upright. So at this point, you could come back up again, palms together, heels together, but we're going to do the counter pose. It's very similar to what we did at the first session. So let's turn to face the camera. Extend your legs. We're gonna a little bit of hip openers. Bring your right hand to the inner right knee. Lift your right knee up. Insert your right arm underneath the leg from the inside. Just pick the leg up. Insert your left fingers between the toes. Spread the toes. Massage the sole. Start to turn through your ankle joint. Keep reaching out through your left heel. Turn your foot in the opposite direction and then stop the motion. You can either hold the foot and hold the knee, or you can hug the lower leg. Inhale, you lengthen your spine. Exhale, hug in. If you're experiencing sensitive knees, press out through the heel. This is gonna protect, uh, prevent the knee from torquing, okay? I've been doing this for a little bit of time, so my knees, my, my ankles are a bit more open. The inhalations, you lengthen the body, the leg releases. The exhalations, you hug in. So do this as often as you feel required. To feel that opening. If you want to go a little deeper, just hold your knee, hold your foot. Inhale, pull the knee out to the side. 
Exhale, pull it towards the midline without twisting your spine. Next time the knee comes out, hold it out. And start to roll it in a circular direction. Visualize the top of your leg into the hip socket. We hold a lot of tension in the hips as well, physical, mental, and emotional. It's a good opportunity to let it turn out. Turn your leg in the opposite direction. And then stop the motion. If it's available to you, you can bring your right ankle right on top of the thigh, hold the foot, press the knee towards the floor and just pulse on your breath. Try not to force your body. Let your body open up according to its time. Again, protect your knee, press through your heel. So let's stop the motion, just take hold of the foot, and press the leg straight towards the front, pull the shoulder back, lift the heel, experience the stretch underneath your leg, and then lower down. So we're gonna do the second side and we're just gonna go through it a little faster, okay? So left hand under the knee, we pick it up. Arm comes right underneath the calf, lift your leg. Press the right leg straight, sit your spine straight. Fingers between the toes, spread your toes, massage the sole of your foot. Start to focus on your ankle and start to turn the ankle in one direction. Turn it in the opposite direction. And again, I invite you to take as much time as you need to to practice through this. You don't have to do according to the time that we're working with here. We'll stop the motion. You can hold the foot and hold the knee. Inhale, lengthen your spine up, press through your heel, and just hug the leg in towards the body. Or you can take it right between the elbows and pull in. Inhalations you release, exhalations you hug in. Going a little deeper now, you'll hold the ankle, hold the knee. Inhale, pull the knee out to the side. Exhale, pull it towards the midline. Inhale out, exhale in. Next time your knee comes out to the side, start to turn it in one direction. Turn it narrow at first, then go wider and wider, depending on how tight or open you might be feeling. And then stop the motion. Bring your ankle back to the thigh, press out of the heel, hold the foot, hold the knee. Inhale, lengthen your spine. Exhale, press towards the floor and pulse. And then we'll stop the motion. Take your hand to the foot, reach out of your heel, press it straight. Inhale, lift the leg up, feel the stretch behind your leg, and then lower down. So why did we do all this? This is meant to be a hip opening exercise. You can wiggle through the toes, roll on the heels, bounce your knees. If you can, you can take a full lotus. This is something that you can build up to. If you do those hip opening exercises daily, you'll be able to do this in no time. If that's not available to you, take half lotus on one side, curl the other leg underneath. If you'd rather go with no lotus, that's totally fine. Swastikasana, just sit with your legs crossed, relax through your knees. Okay, so let's inhale, lift your arms, spread through your fingers. Exhale, pull the shoulders back. Broaden through your chest, Tuck your tail towards the heels. Navel comes in. Make a fist, squeeze your hands. Fist, squeeze. Compress, expand. Then we'll stop the motion. Turn your palms up. Bring your thumb tips right to the base of the pinky finger. Wrap your fingers around that thumb, form a fist. And now mesh your knuckles together like a gear and you're just gonna roll in. This is gonna actually take a lot of tension out of your hands, particularly if you do a lot of work at the desk with a mouse, keyboard. Switch the gear so you can access that left out knuckle. And then we'll stop the motion. Press into the fists, inhale, lift your spine. 
exhale, fold forward and down. All the way, round into your spine. Pulse your body, send the breath out through your nose. And then gently stop the motion, just hang there for a minute. And then inhale, bring yourself back up. Nice and easy. I'm gonna turn around so you can just see my hand position. Melissa is gonna face you. So you're still gonna stay in whatever seated position you want. You can either bring your hands behind your back. You can take reverse namaste. Or if you're sitting in a lotus, Over time, you'll be able to join both of your hands to your toes. I'm not doing that today. Whatever you're going to do, take the hand position, open through your heart, relax your shoulders, relax your temples, jaws and tongues, swallow down. Inhale, lift your spine, exhale, fold forward. Inhale, come up. Exhale, turn to look over your right knee. Exhale, fold over. Inhale, come up. Exhale, turn to face your left knee. Exhale, fold down. Inhale, come up. Turn back towards the center. Let's just release the hands to the knees. Relax through your shoulders. You can take a very simple mudra, chin mudra, tip of the index finger to the tip of the thumb. Turn your palms up if you're willing to receive. Turn your palms down if you've got something to give. Close your eyes. Focus either at your heart or your third eye center. Meditate on the mantra. Om Kriya Babaji Namah Om. Keep your eyes closed, just focus on the very tip of your nose. Even though the eyes are closed, you're looking at the tip of your nose, focus at your third eye. Quarter open your eyes, just beyond the tip of the nose, keep mentally focusing at the third eye center. Waking eye meditation. Let's release the hands, Bring your hands underneath your knees, lift your knees up, extend your legs forward. Wiggle through your toes, roll on your heels, bounce your knees, pat your legs, and then we'll stop the motion. So it's time for our final Shavasana to end our second session here. So inhale, send your arms out to the sides, lift your arms up, pull your heart towards the sky, look up, reach. Exhale, cross your arms, tuck your chin, round your spine, and slowly surrender into the support of the earth. Separate your heels, flop through your feet, separate your arms, palms, turning up. So I'll guide you through a Shavasana meditation the same way that we closed the last class. Inhale, just lift your head up, touch your chin to the chest. Exhale, lower down. Close your eyes. Focus at the very tip of your nose. Squeeze, scrunch all the muscles in your face as tight as you can towards the tip of the nose. And then release. Squeeze your eyes tight, clench through your jaws, and turn your cheeks into a tight smile. Hold the stretch, keep breathing. And then release. Keep your eyes closed, separate through your jaws. 
Press your lips together and fill your cheeks with as much air as you can, smoothen through your forehead. Keep breathing. And then release. Open your mouth. Send your tongue out first and then down towards the chin. Open your eyes wide, lengthen your face, drop through your jaws. And then release. Close your eyes. Retract the tongue. Let the lips and the teeth barely touch. Focus on how your skull meets the earth. Let all the energy of the head, the flesh of the scalp, slowly melt into that point of contact. Every time you exhale, just feel your eyeballs sinking deeper into your skull. No tension in the temples, the jaws, or the tongue swallow down. Turn your head a few times from side to side. And then stop the motion. Bring your awareness to your right hand. Spread all the fingers of your right hand as wide as you can. Hold the stretch and then let it go. Bring your thumb to the center of your palm. Wrap the right fingers over the thumb and squeeze and hold a tight fist. Let it go. Inhale, lift the right forearm up towards the sky. Let it drop. Inhale, lift the right arm up towards the sky. Let it drop. Bring your awareness all the way over to your left palm. Spread the left fingers wide, expand and hold the stretch. And then release. Bring your thumb to the center of the palm. Wrap your fingers around the thumb, squeeze and hold a fist. Let it go. Inhale, lift the left forearm. Let it drop. Inhale, lift the right ar left arm. Let it drop. Roll your feet in and out several times like windshield washers. Stop the motion. Spread and squeeze through the right toes a few times. Point and flex through your right foot several times. And then stop the motion. Point the right toes, lift your right leg. Notice how heavy it feels. Let it drop. Spread and squeeze through your left toes. Point and flex through your left foot. And then stop the motion. Point the left toes, lift the left leg. Squeeze all the muscles to the bone. Let it drop. Now give yourself the auto-suggestion that my feet are relaxed. My ankles are relaxed. My calves are relaxed. My knees are relaxed. My thighs are relaxed. My hips are relaxed. My pelvis is relaxed. My stomach is relaxed. My back is relaxed. My chest is relaxed. My hands are relaxed. My elbows are relaxed. My shoulders are relaxed. My neck is relaxed. My tongue is relaxed. My nose is relaxed. My eyes are relaxed. My cheeks are relaxed. My ears are relaxed. My temples are relaxed. My forehead is relaxed, and the crown of my head is relaxed. So here ends the class. Remain in your Shavasana for as long as you wish. Stay tuned for the third and final installment of Babaji's Kriya Yoga, postures 13 through 18. When the time is right for you, You'll wiggle through the fingers and toes. You'll turn the head a few times. You'll roll onto your right side. Stack your knees, hips, and shoulders. And then you're gonna press yourself up to sitting comfortably. As long as your spine is long, 
Your shoulders are relaxed, there's no tension in the face. Just simply be. Bring your palms together. Om Kriya Babaji Nama Om. Om Kriya Babaji Nama Om. Namaste. Thank you very much.